Uh, thank you, Stan. Uh, my name is Kayum. I'm from Afghanistan, uh, being in Australia for 10 years on a bridging visa. So the waiting and uncertainty is causing me distressing. Separation from my family is causing me um, depressing and anxiety. So I done MBA, so I came to would like to work as a professional accountant. But being that I have a bridging visa, I cannot work in my field. So I started my own business, created um, uh, jobs, contributing in the economy, uh, like pay taxes, but not, I'm not entitled to any um, Medicare. So if I would like to buy a house or extend my business, I can't do it because of, again, is a bridge, uh, having a bridging visa, temporary bridging visa. Australia statistics say we have 20,000 refugees or asylum seekers from 2000, but they haven't been processed in 20 years. So my question is, the, why does Australia treat asylum seeker unfairly and unhuman in this modern world? Thank you. Um, thank you for sharing your story. To, just to give up, I, I came here as a refugee, so I know the struggle of trying to, you know, um, learn the language, adapt to this new society, and rebuild your life. So absolutely, um, the, I've spoken with the Asylum Seeker Resource Centre, who have told me about the number of bridging, um, asylum seekers on bridging visa, and I think that the government, I think. This is a great opportunity for the government to really, especially with the workforce shortages, mm. to ensure that these uh, many of these um, asylum seekers can actually contribute and participate uh, as you know into our economy now, uh, as we're talking about short workforce shortages. So I think it's it's very critical, and I know that today that um, one of our uh, independent um, cross benches have put in a, a, a petition uh, from the Asylum Resource Centre calling for the government to recognise uh, the skills uh, and the and qualification of the asylum seekers so that we can actually address a, a workforce shortages. Jane Kyan was here um, throughout your government's term in office, and here he is saying he's done everything right, a job, contributed to the society, doesn't have a Medicare card, can't buy a house, can't work, can't, doesn't have, in his field, can't have security, we should hang our heads in shame at a, a situation like this, shouldn't we? Well, first of all, can I say thank you for coming to our country and contributing the way that you have. I think that that gives us great heart. Shouldn't we now return also, the favour? And also, I'm terribly sorry about what's going on in your own country. It does sound like it is um, you know, very sad for so many of your, um, your fellow countrymen, and that does break my heart. Um, and this is your stories, of the stories that we're hearing from over there, are, are quite common. And but but, but Ka Kaim wants to know now, <laughs> this is his country now. I understand that you're here on a bridging visa. I don't know the circumstances in which you came to the country other than that you were came seeking asylum. And for that, I'm very, gra gla very glad that we could offer you that asylum. Now, the fact that you haven't been able to get a visa beyond that, I don't know the circumstances around that. Why that has taken so long, without knowing your personal circumstances, I really, really can't give you any comfort, other than to say that, uh, you know, we have a very strict border policy in this country for good reason, for good reason, and it's not something that we should shy away from. Because we have a strong border policy, it allows us to take in more refugees, to, uh, to accommodate more people. A really well-managed immigration policy allows us to do that, and that's been the foundation of a strong economy mm. for many Kay. years, and it's not something that we should shy away from. But that said, we should make sure that we embrace people that want to contribute to our society and that we look after them well because they have chosen to come here. Katie, the, the, the question that Kai posed is why does Australia treat asylum seekers so unfairly? And this is coming from someone who is committed to 10 years in this country. Yeah. Can you look at Kai and tell him why? Well, thank you uh, for asking your question. And I have to say, this is an area where we've inherited a mess from the previous government, and we are working through it. Like, um, couldn't you couldn't you fix that now by by committing to to supporting Kaim and and well, expediting his case? Well, I don't know your individual case, but I there do we know go. what Thank we're doing. You. I do know what we're doing as a government, which is, and you'll see it in the budget papers. We're putting a huge 
um, additional investment into the immigration part of Home Affairs to process the more than 2.6 million visas applications uh, that we inherited when we came into government. It is a massive mess. Okay, so we've had closed borders for two years. Come on. Well, I think for people who were here, many there were hundreds of thousands of applications for people who were here that there could have been some progress made on that. I don't accept it was just COVID related. I do accept that you were obsessed with Operation you, Sovereign you, you, Borders. You know what we're doing? We're at, talking, at the we're talking the program straight... That you have adopted. No, that no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm can, can I stop? Because you're talking past the man who asked the question. Well, no, and I'm you're not. talking to I'm each other. Stand. No, you are. No, Kyan, you, you, you have something to say? So I came as a student. I didn't come even by board for just your government say, and this is my document, is a full, yep. full of the documents. I work with the USAID, I work with the World Bank project as a finance manager in, uh, in Afghanistan, yep. which is Taliban was targeting. Yep. We in Afghanistan, we said, you coalition, our Americans said, we are helping you. We need people to, we need education. For example, how many scholarship you given to Afghan when you Australia force was there? Zero. How many um, human humanitarian visa you provided to Afghan? Zero. So the people Afghan is like me as I came as a student and provide all the documents, do all the right thing, and still they misleading the people, uh, telling the wrong thing. That, oh, we have this process. Immigration, you wait for ten years, uh, five years, then they reject you. Then you have to go to tribunal. Tribunal is one person, is not in a few members. This one lady just reject you for anything. I provide as many, many like this is full file. It's not one document, and she just rejected. Now I'm in a, like circuit court. I, I don't know my uncertainty. I work. I do my taxes. I do all right things. No criminal. No anything. Yeah. But still, why? Why no. they treat yeah. me like that? Kaim, th thank you for bringing your story. I know we don't have a lot of time to go into the ins and outs, but Katie, can I? I get a commitment, though, that there will be a follow-up to Kaim's oh, case. Oh, for sure. And I'm sorry if you felt like I was talking past you. There was no intention to do that at all. Um, but absolutely, I will make sure that Minister Giles um, and we connect uh, with, with him, with you. But on the broader point, we did make some commitments about dealing with people who had been on temporary protection visas for long periods of time. Um, 10 years, um, certainly years, to convert those to more permanent arrangements. And, and we are doing that. What, but the point I was trying to make is we came in with a department that wasn't resourced, where there was this massive backlog in applications, and we are working through that, and that is funded in this budget because we rate it as such a top priority.